Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habata fillah the duty of the Muslim is that he or she should first and foremost be aware of their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he or she should represent good for the rest of mankind and in order to know our duty to Allah we have to go back to the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wal I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me so from this ayah we know that the divine purpose, the reason we are here, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every believer should always have that in his or her mind. To be aware of why they're here. Not just to indulge and waste time and money and think they are just living in the moment. But every believer should be aware that his or her life should have value and his or her life should have direction and that direction is to worship the creator of the heavens and earth alone associating no partners with him that he has no sons he has no daughters he has no girlfriends he has no wives ta'ala, and he has no children but rather that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and he is the creator and sustainer of everything and he has divine names and attributes that we supplicate to him by the second thing that a believer must always be conscious of <clears throat> is practicing and actualizing and being conscious of worshiping their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and setting that example, that higher that higher uh, actualizing that higher calling and setting an example for the rest of creation. And that comes with having knowledge of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and knowing who he is subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he's not a man, that he's not a spirit, that he's not an animal, that he is not anything that we can conceptualize except we describe him by his divine names and attributes that he mentions in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions Fi Kitab al Kareem in the surah, in the chapter, the short chapter entitled The Time, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Wal Asr inna linsana la fi khusr illa ladina aminu wa amanu salihati wa tawasu bil haqi wa tawasu bil sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem by the time so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time letting us know time is invaluable and time is incredibly important for us as human beings wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr all of mankind is in a loss so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described all of his creation all of mankind humankind as being in a loss we're all in a loss and then he gave the exception. He made a stithna. He said, Illa ladina amanu, except those who believe. So that means you have to have iman. You have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to escape from being from amongst the categories of those people who are lost. That you need to escape from that category by having iman, by having faith. And having faith can only through come through knowledge, through ilm, through knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and knowledge from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala based on knowledge, based on understanding and based on insight and wisdom and that can only come through study so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا so first we have to believe وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ and then do righteous deeds. So that means that we have to practice the knowledge that we have attained. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of all of us of our many shortcomings in this regard. So we have to practice what we preach. Practice what we study. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ 
وَتَوَسُّوا بِالْحَقِّ And call to that truth. So that means the mu'min, the believer, is gaining knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to worship him and how to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how to understand the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by following the path of the classical scholars, which is the Salaf al-Saleh, meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, how they understood Islam, their methodology, and the tabi'een wa tabi'a tabi'een, and those who followed them in righteousness. So, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَسُوا بِالْحَقِّ And that means then inviting to the truth. So that means you've gained knowledge of who Allah is and how to worship Him. And following the Prophet ﷺ, that means you are practicing that knowledge. And that means now you are setting an example and you are calling people and inviting to the truth. Inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your actions, through your speech, through the way you deal with people, through being a trustworthy person, not a person of who's criminal minded and a person who just thinks just like everyone else and doesn't distinguish his or herself through their conduct. The Prophet وسلم, said, Ma min shayin athkulafi mizana mu'min yom al qiyama min husnu khulk wa in Allah yubhidu al fahish al bidi. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech, letting us know what? That the believer, if they're practicing their Islam properly, and they're doing righteous deeds, all of those deeds, all of the things that are mentioned that are praiseworthy in the Quran, and praiseworthy in the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, that this is what the believer should be busying his or herself with, and setting an example for others. That this is the thing that weighs heaviest on the scale that weighs heaviest on the scale of good deeds in the day of judgment. That when your deeds are weighed, meaning that the deeds that you did that were good will be weighed and the deeds that you did that are bad and negative and sinful will be weighed. And whichever one takes precedence or is heavier on the scale is how you're going to be judged. And so if you are cheating and stealing and robbing and cursing and attacking the honor of people, then that those sins that which in ways that you transgress against others, they will take away from your good deeds. Meaning you could have did a lot of good deeds, but you did a lot of evil deeds too. And those evil deeds may eat up some of your good deeds. And may eat up all of your good deeds as the Prophet Wasallam mentioned in an authentic hadith about the one who is bankrupt. Because he cursed this one, he attacked the honor of this one, he stole from this one, he beat up this one. This person... Whatever good deeds they had are getting snatched. Everyone else is going to take from their deeds because they disrespected, they attacked, they hurt the honor, they physically harmed them and oppressed them. So we have to be careful that we're practicing that knowledge and sharing it with the people by righteous conduct and good speech and good manners. And the fourth thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the ayah, then he said, وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ He said, then it is also uh, not just calling to the truth, but being patient upon that path, because you're going to make a lot of enemies. A lot of people are going to be against you when you're calling to the truth, when you're studying the truth, when you're practicing the truth, truth and when you're preaching the truth, you're going to get enemies. The best of mankind, the prophets, alayhim abdul salatu wasalam, had so much opposition, had people who killed prophets, people who uh, did everything to slander the prophets, to attack the prophets physically, and did everything to the prophets, alayhim abdul salatu wasalam. May Allah, the peace and blessing be upon all the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the path, that's the minhaj al anbiya, that's the, pro the, the, the way of the prophets. And that's why I advise myself and my brothers and sisters and remind myself to practice, to study, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because death awaits us all. Kullu nafsin da'aikatul mawt. Everyone shall taste death. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْمَرِي the Prophet ﷺ said, if a person dies, his deeds stop except three. And then he said, 
الصدق الصدق جارية العلم ينتفع به وولد صالح يدعو له رواه مسلم The Prophet وسلم said that when a person dies his deeds cut off except three The first is that they do a continuous charity so meaning, maybe you built a masjid, maybe you built a place where people can study and learn about how to worship their Lord properly. Maybe you dug a well and people benefit from it even after you die. So every time someone who is famished or someone who has no water benefits from your well, you're getting adjur. Maybe you planted some trees and the people still gain shade and those trees lived a hundred years after you and they're still benefiting. This is a part of Sadaqa Jari. It's a continuous charity. And the second thing the Prophet Sallallahu said from those deeds, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Ilm Yuntufabi, that knowledge that the people benefit from. And the knowledge that he's talking about is ilm uh, nafi is beneficial knowledge, meaning Islamic knowledge. That's the most beneficial knowledge. It's not about being an engineer, a doctor. All of those things are beautiful. Those are beautiful to have those, as they say, secular sciences or sciences that are not about how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the highest knowledge that you can gain is how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on clarity and sharing that knowledge and practicing that knowledge. So... That means then the one who shares knowledge, who Allah favors with knowledge, and they write books, and they give lectures, and they have students, and people who do good even after they die, and go back to what they said after they die, and it's based on righteousness, then this is, this is, uh, this is knowledge that people benefited from. That's beneficial knowledge. And so many, when we look at the, the seerah of the ulama, the scholars of the past, what household does not have maybe perhaps Imam Nawawi's Arba'in Nawawi or his uh, Riyad al-Salihin? Ahlul Sunnah and even Ahlul Bid'ah read this book. Or uh, Bukhari and Muslim. So what do you think about those Imams who wrote those books and who had students and who left this khair? Look at the reward and the ajr they get. Or the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala'ina majma'een, the ajr that they get because they preserve the religion of Islam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned the, th the third thing, he said, وَوَلَدٍ صَالِهٍ يَدْعُهُ يَدْعُهُ He mentioned a righteous child that supplicates on your behalf when you die. Meaning that if your children, hopefully you have good relations with your children, and that when you die, that they supplicate for you and ask that Allah has mercy upon you and they do righteous deeds like maybe fasting or maybe uh, giving charity on your behalf even if you die or they uh, they make Hajj or Umrah on your behalf that those are righteous deeds that will continue with you those are, that's that, that waladin salihin yad'uluhu. And it's the supplication. And so we ask Allah the Almighty, Azza wa Jal, to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of the salihin. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.